Armorican is my debut cookbook and it's all about the food of the Indian American diaspora. So what Indian food looks like in this country. As someone who grew up in America, but also grew up, you know, very close to my Indian heritage, I always loved raiding my mom's kitchen. She has all the best Indian cookware. It's all worn in, it's like super beautiful. So I grew up with like a kadai, a tawa, masala dabbas, like those things were standard in my house. So I didn't really know what a Dutch oven was, honestly, until maybe high school, because I watched so much Food Network. So the problem with Indian cookware, especially in America, is that it's really hard to source. For now, currently, you have to go to India or know somebody. I love Made In, and that's why you know I came to them with the idea for doing like a South Asian cookware line because I thought it was like one of the few companies like that could really execute it well. Because I've loved all the quality of everything else that they've you know made over the years that I have in my kitchen. My kitchen is truly mostly stocked with Made In products. Yeah, I think I DM'd Chip on Instagram, just being like, "Hey, like I have an idea for like a South Asian collab." I'm like writing this book, you know, would you guys be interested in maybe, you know, collaborating and, you know, making some sort of like collection. Chip immediately shot it over to Jake. I think I gave Jake like an initial list of 12 items that I'd like love to see, which was very ambitious. Kushbu was kind enough to one day send us an email outlining all of these incredible tools and why Maiden should make them, how they would be used, why they would appeal to Maiden's customer today. There were a few that really stood out as logical additions to current collections of ours and figured out there was a lot of overlap between our expertise in certain materials and the best materials used for some of these tools. I mean, I'm really picky with what I wanted to see out of the cookware. You know, there's a lot of functionality that needed to be part of all of these things. When I saw the Masienda collab with the Kamal, I was basically like, this is almost a Thawa, but not quite. And so, you know, I wanted it to be just like a little bit smaller, a little bit easier to manage, and I needed a handle on it. Which I think just gives it more versatility as far as like South Asian cooking is concerned. I wanted to do a carbon steel dosa pan because I love the material. Like that as the more you use it, the more it seasons, the better it just gets better with time, which is not always the case with dosa pans in India. And so this one, it's like you can buy it and it just lasts for a really, really long time. On the flip side, you can't use a classic nonstick spray coating because those don't last. And as you're continuously feeding more and more heat to this pan, cooking more and more food, those pans are gonna die on you. So carbon steel is the best balance of the durability, longevity, while also building a naturally nonstick surface. We also took it a step further than a lot of the pans in the market with this heavy duty stainless steel handle that's riveted, really restaurant quality. It's kind of a no brainer for us to make the Thawa out of carbon steel. I was really picky, especially with the masala dabba. Like I had a lot of specifications that I wanted out of it. So many masala dabbas on the market are too big, quite frankly. I think you should be able to hold it with one hand so you can easily cook and like dole out spices. Because sometimes a lot of Indian cooking moves really fast too. And I know you should like do a mise en place and like whatever, but like, let's be real. Like who's doing a mise like every day of their lives? Not me. And so I like to be able to just dole out my spices really fast as things are going. And then you want all the barkis or the bowls that are in the masala that hold the different spices to be like really tight so that it doesn't shift around and the spices don't mix or spill into one another. You also don't want the actual dubba or the container to feel too cheap too. So that was interesting. We went through a lot of rounds of like the steel weights that I had never really thought about before and suddenly was like deeply immersed in like, how heavy do I like my steel? Yeah. <laughs> Stainless clad made a lot of sense for the Kadai. It fits in really nicely with our entire stainless clad collection because first and foremost, you're looking for a flat, strong bottom that isn't gonna warp and bend over time. Because when you're cooking with high heat, you wanna maintain the same temperature all the way around the pan. We also spent a pretty decent amount of time talking about the appropriate size for the Kadai. This will allow you to do all the basic functions that you may see in a kitchen, whether it's stir frying or deep frying, a variety of foods. We use Kadais for everything. Like that's the part that was really cool about a Kadai. It's like an all-in-one kind of pan. It doesn't feel like necessarily like a distinctly Indian piece of cookware. And it's also one of those great pans where it's like you can cook it and then you can serve it directly in that pan because it's also beautiful looking. When you're really looking at the canon of cookware that's kind of out there right now, it's very geared towards like European sensibilities. But you haven't really seen a lot come out of cookware that's geared towards South Asian cooking. This is always exciting to release a category like this. You know, we learned so much from Kushbu and it's always an honor for us when very credible, very opinionated food minds can reach out and uh, help us create uh, new products. And anytime we're able to take our expertise in raw materials and manufacturing and take the feedback from, you know, great food minds and educate us about how to make them better, it's a win-win for us. I'm Kushbu Shah and I use Maiden.